Hey there, Lise here from Hustle & Groove and in this video I want to walk you through how you can create a Google Doc that is both editable and or an alternative to download as a PDF for your lead magnet. So there's lots of different ways that you can do this and I'm just going to really show you a very, very simple way to create this in a customizable way. So you can dive into this more and simply just test it out. But I really want to show you one, how to create it and two, how to make it so that it's easily accessible for someone grabbing it without it messing up your master document. So however you get into your Google Drive or into Google Docs, that's where you want to start. So I'm in my Google Drive, I'm in the Digital Business Lab folder, and I'm just going to click on New, and then I'm going to choose Google Doc, and I'm going to click on Create and Share. Yours might just say Create, and this is because I'm accessing my business Google account. Now, you're just starting with a very plain document. There's no formatting, nothing on here. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go and name this Test uh, GD workbook so that you know what this looks like. So you may have seen a few of these out in the wild already, but the first thing that you want to do is change the background color. Now you can leave it white if you want to add more color in as you go, or you can change the background color uh, so that the elements that you add into here really stand out. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do. So to do that, you just click on File, Print, sorry, file page setup is where I want to go. And you'll see here that you've got some options. So it's, you want to ensure that it says whole document and then you can change your page color. Now you can add custom colors, all the things, but for now, I'm just going to go with a really light green and you definitely want this to be a very, very light color. You don't want this to be too saturated. Otherwise it's really difficult for people to actually be able to read whatever it is that you're putting on here. So then the next thing that I personally like to do is to go in ahead and insert the footer. And the reason why you want to insert a footer is because if you are, regardless of whether this is a paid product or a free product, you still want to have your branding, your copyright, all those types of things. So I'm always going to put a horizontal line and then I'm actually going to center it. And then I am going to put in a copyright. And to do that, all you have to do, do is go insert special character and then look for the copyright sign. And there you go. Um, and it's there. I'm going to go uh, 2023 hustle and groove. And I can't even spell. Uh, and then if this was a paid or even if it's free, I would just say um, not for distribution. And then I would definitely make this smaller. So if you prefer to do all caps, um, you can. So I've just gone straight down to nine. And now I've got kind of the starting point. If you wanted to put your website, you can create the hyperlink um, in here. So I might just go ahead and do that. Um, and let me just come back. TTPS, and of course you can send this to wherever you want it to go, and that is done. Now, if you want to change the color and all those types of things, you're more than welcome to highlight it and then come up to here and change your coloring to whatever your normal kind of color is, but I'm just going to keep it pretty simple uh, for this demonstration. Okay, so now that we've kind of got our base kind of document set up. What I want to show you is how you can really utilize the things that you have access to. Now, the first question that you want to ask yourself is, do I want this document to be used in two different capacities, aka I want it to be one where someone can use it online so it's editable, but I also want it to be useful to someone who does prefer to download and print a PDF because that will restrict some of the options that you use here. So basically, you just want to think through and just ask yourself, am I making this so this is fully accessible and people can use it online only? Or do I want to also have a downloadable version that someone is going to print off? Because then what you won't be able to do is use drop-down fields or anything like that, right? 
So you definitely want to think that through. So I'm just going to assume that we're going to make this an online version only, as in someone is just going to download this, uh, sorry, they're going to access it and fully edit it inside their own Google Doc Drive. So the first thing that, that I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a few different things. So maybe you are doing this as a workbook or maybe it's journal, whatever it is, I'm going to put, just going to put in a few lines because we are going to do a header image. So I just want to have a, a few things there, a few spaces so that I've got a little bit of options here. Now I'm also going to set up my um, heading two and I might go down to heading three and then body. Now the reason why I'm doing this is so that I can come through and change this to my font, uh, whatever that happens to be. So I'm I use Open Sand. And for uh, the hitting one, I do that. And I also like mine to be pretty big. And so actually, let me go and do this. Um, once you've got it highlighted, then you can come in here and click update hitting one to match. So now hitting one is always going to be that. And so hitting two, and actually, I'm just going to change all of these to be open sands. I'm just going to go normal. So heading two, I am going to make, so we did 30, so I'm going to make this 24 and I'm also going to make it bold. And then for heading three, I want that to be around 18 and I'm not going to make it bold. And then for body, I tend to like mine to be at least 12. So then once you've got done that, you're just going to come through and click on here and go update and do whatever it is that you need to do to update those. And then body text is your normal text update. Once that's done, you can delete delete this. Now they're all set. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm just going to go normal text. So now it's set to open sans 12 points. So I'm good to go. So now I'm going to just start with, you know, if I was going to do a, a workbook, what might that look like? So I'm actually going to go and grab some content. So we've got something that we can utilize for this. Okay, so this would replace what you might create in Canva. And again, it really does depend on how accessible you want this document to be. So I'm just going to recreate a little bit of a micro offer planner that I have. So I'm going to start with research uh, and then I'm just pasting in some of the content that I just copied. Uh, and this research is going to be heading one. And then it says using the space below, uh, use use creative market, blah, 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 um, map out a few different things. Now, the original has a whole bunch of uh, tables. Now, this is not an editable PDF. This is de designed to be downloaded. So I do want to show you what you can do if you, and this is why I'm a, not a huge fan of doing this layer of or level of stuff inside ConvertKit, uh, sorry, inside Canva, is because of all the clicking around that you've got to kind of do just to get um, everything that you want. So it says here, what are the top three printables you have found? And so what you can do is utilize the table option to help you, you know, and make this look a little bit different. So I'm just going to make that bold. And depending on how familiar you are with the with Google Docs, you can insert a table and I'm just going to make it one cell. And then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click on table properties. And it's at, um, sorry, the color level. Now, I don't necessarily like the table border, so I'm going to get rid of that. But what I'm going to do is make this white. Now, this is where having this colored background really does make this stand out. So I am going to go one. I'm just going to type straight into here one. And then I'm going to do this. And then I'm obviously going to come back into here. Now, obviously, the person who's using this can come in and change this. But I'm just setting up the document in case they want to come in here and do something else. So in this other one, um, what topic or niche are they in? So now that I'm seeing this, we actually probably want to do more than this. So I'm actually going to add in a column. So let's go. Let me do it this way. Uh, insert table. And then we actually want 
it to probably be three. So I am going to, what was that? What type of a niche are they in? Um, and actually you could do a list. So let me show you what that might look like. So I'm actually just going to come into here and delete this column. So you kind of do need to plan this out a little bit when you are thinking through this. Um, and then what I'm going to do is just pop this over here. Uh, so same deal. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go and make that uh, white, but I'm not going to necessarily worry about making this particular cell white because what I'm going to do is click on insert and add in a drop down. So there are two that already exist, but I'm going to create a new one. And we're going to say niche options. And then I'm going to say um, what niche here as the first one. And then option two, you might say uh, health. And then you might say wealth or, or finance, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you might say relationship. And then if you want to add in another one, maybe you say passion. So, and then you can come in and change the colors, which I'm a huge fan of doing. So obviously you don't want to have the same color. Uh, and then passion, I'm going to go with purple. And the reason why we've given this first one an option is so, well, actually you're going to see in a second why. Uh, because now it says what niche, you know, so then I can come in and choose that. So let's now copy this uh, all the way down to and come back in and go two, three. So you don't have to have uh, that drop down inside a, a, a table either. You can have it individually wherever you wish. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of just using these components. Now, if we wanted to add an icon here, you have the option to come in here and use special characters. There's also um, and the emoji option. Uh, and inside here, you can also come into uh, where it says, you can also use the emoji one there. But I'm a huge fan of utilizing what other options plugins extensions is what they are called in here so in here uh, I've added what is called icons for slides and docs now if you don't have that then you just have to come into add-ons get add-ons and look for that particular one so it just takes a little bit to load and you want to make sure it's working with docs and if I just type on type in icons um, you can see that it will show up so it's already installed there's lots of different options here, so feel free to insert whatever you want. Uh, but I'm just going to come through, and wherever your cursor is, is where you want the actual icon to go. So just be aware of when you start this extension that it is um, the icon is where you want it to go. So it will give you, you know, kind of some popular ones. You can do a quick search. So I'm actually just going to type, maybe I'm going to look for, let's just see what comes up if I type in the word research. And then you'll see some are colored, uh, some are just kind of an outline. I personally prefer to go for an, more of an outline one than a colored in one. And I'm just going to go with this one. And you can see here that you can choose to change the color and you can choose custom uh, and you can see that it chooses the size. I'm going to go in at 16 and see how big that is. That might be a little bit too small. Okay, so I think I can make it a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, but that's made it really small. So let's come back to, I normally go for 32. I just want to see if I went in at the smaller one, whether it would work. And that's actually pretty good for uh, this. And you might want to fill around um, with margins and stuff like that. And maybe I do want that to be a little bit, I like it to be slightly bigger um, than the actual thing. So you can come in and you can already start to see how this looks very, very different to just a standard Google Doc uh, and, you know, lots of different things that you can do. So I definitely encourage you to play around with that. And then the final thing that you can do is create a header image to go up here. Now, you could probably get away with using the email version that is already inside Canva. So I'm just going to quickly show you here if I go email. 
email header, um, although that's pretty big. So you might want something, you might want to resize this. So you can see here that it says 600 by 200. I actually want that to be a full width. So I'm going to go um, at least 10880. And then I might leave the height uh, at the 200. And let's just see what it does. So that is a much better ratio. And then from here, it's really up to you what you want to do, but whatever your name of your document is what you want to put in here. So if you want to keep things looking a little bit different, and then you might come into elements and you might change um, your background. Maybe you want to put a photo background. Uh, I might do something like this. I might just move this around a little bit. You know, lots of different kind of ways that you can utilize this. So I'm just going to actually move this down a bit. I'm just going to go done. Uh, and then I'm going to add in what my text is. You could also use um, add a heading at your workbook name here. Uh, and you know you can keep this as simple as you wish or you can make it really complex. Again I like to keep things pretty simple and then what I might do is come here and just go um, the workbook and then I like to make that a little bit different and then obviously I want to make that white um, and it didn't do that so let's just do that. That's being a pain. Perfect uh, and then if you want to add your logo or anything like that uh, you can go ahead and do that. So let me just go see all and for this particular one I'd probably go with just my white and blue nothing too crazy. Done. So then I'm just going to go uh, Google Doc header. I'm going to download it. It does get a little bit tricky what I'm about to show you. So I will fair warning any tool that you use is never going to be 100% perfect because if you think about how the Google Doc is designed. Uh, so basically then what you want to do is come up to that top and click on header and insert your header. Now I tend to like to do just a couple of uh, hard returns so that I can um, have a little bit of space and then I just like to go insert image and then upload straight from my computer and I'm just going to go downloads and I'm going to go grab, yes, I've got lots of downloads. So, <laughs> so it looks pretty small to begin with. So the first thing that we're going to do is click on wrap text. And then what you want to ensure that you do is make it zero. Now, as soon as you do that, it does tend to do something a little bit weird. So what I tend to do is go with, with leave it at that and then move it so that it takes up the whole space. And then sometimes you have to move it around quite a few times, as you can see. Um, it, it's definitely not a perfect um, match, but you will find that the more that you kind of play around with it, the better it, it kind of allows you to do. I like mine to go right off just a little bit. Uh, and then I'm and then that does that too. So like I said, definitely have to play around with this a little bit. So it just depends on whether you want anything kind of at the top or whether you want it to be hard top. It might not let us because I want to do that. So you may have to fill around with it. Yeah. So now that we have got that in there, I'm just going to remove that um, and then Sometimes it's really finicky. As I said, this is not a perfect science. So I'm going to take the font size right down. I might just do it all the way down to there so that we've got a bit of space. And then you can move this up a little bit. And there you go. That's pretty. Now, I probably wouldn't go with um, this pinky color uh, for this, but I just wanted to show you how you can just start to create lots of different options and then maybe um, you have this is a space for you to record your ideas and then you can do insert table same deal just one uh, 
option and then it's just format table table properties um, and then I just I'm a huge fan of doing this and then you can uh, make it take up more space um, from there so and then I typically like to come in and just make some adjustments around how much space so it does take a little bit to to kind of get an initial layout done but once you do then it becomes easier uh, for you to be able to replicate what you've got going on here so then the next step is if you want people to be able to utilize this so uh, if I wanted to change what this has uh, I'm just going to do that just so you can kind of um, see how that looks uh, otherwise just leave it as is so if you want someone to be able to utilize this the first thing that you're going to do is come up to where it says share and you need to make sure that it does not show restricted it needs to say anyone with the link now you need to copy this link now there's an extra thing that you're going to do at this point so you would open up a new window and you would paste it in do not hit return the next thing that you want to do is where it says edit so where you've got where my cursor is blank is blinking not blanking uh, you're going to change this to say copy and then you're going to select all of that so I'm on a Mac and I did command a if you're on a Windows it is control a you want to just select all of that uh, and then what you can do is that is the link that you use and I'm going to show you what happens is now it's going to force someone to make a copy and when they do that they are never accessing your original document so you can apply this to any document that you have if you're sharing if you're sharing templates or anything like that I highly recommend that you do it but what it's going to do is it's going to create that copy for the person in their Google Drive so hopefully this very short video was very helpful for you this was a question from one of our members inside the Digital Income Accelerator. And I thought you guys might be interested in learning how to how to use this. Now, obviously, there are so many add-ons that you can include here. So, if you ever wanted to do more beyond what is here, there are definitely more options. So, have fun, play around with this, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. Take care.